Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to Elite Odyssey. Now, I'm in a bit of a rush at the moment. I've got a taxi to catch. Wait a minute, Jingles, what are you talking about? Don't you know this is the full release version of the game? There are many, many things that don't work in the full release version of the game, but one thing that definitely works is the ability to fly your own ships. And you've got, like, two billion credits worth of ships, so why are you booking a taxi? Well... There's a method to my madness. You see, here's the thing. The suits and weapons that you start off with in Odyssey, the ones available for sale from vendors in stations and settlements, unless you're extremely lucky and one of those very rare individuals who comes across a vendor who's actually selling upgraded versions of the suits and weapons, which are limited stock, by the way, and once you buy them, they're gone. But unless you're one of those extremely rare individuals, the regular grade one versions of all of the suits and weapons that are available for sale from the non-player character vendors are to put it mildly dog shit i mean they are terrible equip yourself with your battle ready dominator suit step into combat shields up fully charged bang bang two shots from a plasma shotgun you are dead <laughs> it's as simple as that the default grade one versions of all of the suits and weapons are bloody awful so naturally you're going to want to get them upgraded as soon as humanly possible and for that you're going to require the services of the new odyssey engineers now by default the existence not the locations but the existence of three of these engineers is going to be public knowledge and that is why i'm booking myself an apex interstellar taxi trip because one of these engineers domino green she requires that you have travelled at least a hundred light years in a taxi. So that's why I'm booking a taxi to, well, anywhere, it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to do anything when I get there other than book a return journey. As long as the there and back is at least a hundred light years, that's all I care about. And sure enough, once I'm back and I'm safely ensconced on board my own ship, there's the invitation from Domino Green. So, using the galaxy map, I plot a course to the Arishis system. And we're going to go and see exactly what it is that young Domino has to offer. Domino's base is called the Jackrabbit. It's located on the first moon of the fourth planet of the Arishis system. It's pretty much just a featureless ball of ice. But it is located a handy slightly less than 1,000 light seconds away from the system jump point. So it will not take you long to get there. The Jackrabbit has small, medium and large landing pads, so it can accept any class of ship. But the actual services available here are pretty limited. There is no black market, there are no contacts, no crew lounge, there are no fleet carrier services of any description. There is no shipyard, there is no universal carter graphics, in fact the only things that you can really do here are refuel, rearm and repair, and speak to the engineer Domino Green. Actually that's not entirely true. All of the Odyssey Engineers' planetary bases also have an Apex Interstellar taxi service. So even if you don't have a ship, which makes sense when you think about it, because if your activities in Elite have been restricted to on-foot activities, why would you need a ship in order to speak to an on-foot engineer? Well, you don't. You can always take a taxi once you've received the invitation. But aside from Apex Interstellar, Domino Green really is the only show at the Jackrabbit. And there she is. No, not that. That. Is it just me, or has this all seemed just a little bit too easy so far? Ugh. This office is too bright, don't you think? What do you want? Haha, <laughs> just kidding. You clearly want equipment upgrades so you can go save the galaxy or something. Whatever, I'm game. Name's Domino Green, and you're standing in my office. Alright, so she offers suit modifications and weapon modifications suit stuff or gun stuff select suit to modify okay well i'm going through every suit i have and i'd like to modify my maverick suit so that it doesn't draw as much power when i use the laser cutter but the option just isn't oh i get it you can't modify grade one suits because the modification slots only become available when you upgrade the suit. But if I had better suits, I wouldn't be in such desperate need of engineer modifications, would I? There's the catch. 
Just choose already. Well, I'd like to choose Domino, but you're being really fussy about it. Can you perhaps introduce me to another engineer who isn't quite as fussy? Actually, if we're going to do business and all, I have a bit of a business relationship with Push. It keeps me focused when my brain's all wah, you know? Anyway, bring me some and I'll make it worth your while. Now, I don't know what Push is. I've never come across it before. I've never uh, heard of it. But it sounds to me like she stuff. wants me to bring her some dangerous recreational drugs. And it's the same issue with the weapons as it is with the suits. They cannot be upgraded, or they cannot be modified, until you've upgraded them. So, the shit weapons cannot be made slightly less shit until they've been made slightly less shit. Hmm? I wasn't paying attention. So, I guess the moral of the story thus far is don't even waste your time unlocking any of these engineers. Until you've managed to upgrade some, at least, of your suits and weapons to at least Grade 2. Good. Thanks for coming. See ya. Now, I can't help but feel that we're in a little bit of a Catch-22 situation here. Because the reason I want Domino Green to modify my weapons and suits is because they're shit. But the only way to get Domino Green to modify my weapons hey. and suits is if I go and make them slightly less shit. But if I do that, I don't really need... <laughs> <laughs> it's not just me, is it? You see where I'm coming from here? Actually, it's far, far, far worse than that. As we'll discover in a moment. Elite has always been an extremely grindy game. That's why people sink so many hours into it. You start off without a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of, and you slowly grind your way up, earning money and the ability to purchase bigger and better ships, but you quickly realise that fresh out of the factory, those bigger and better ships might be bigger, they're certainly more expensive, but they're not necessarily that much better. The stock modules are, well, to use a word that's going to be extremely popular in this video, dog shit. So it often turns out that the cost of equipping a newly purchased ship Hello. with modules that are not Perhaps dog shit, vastly exceeds the Our price of the ship itself. It's a bit like your boy racers tooling around in their £500 second-hand Seat Ibiza fitted with a £2,000 sound system. But anyway, you eventually, after many, many, many weeks and possibly months or even years of grinding, you get to the stage where you finally figure that you have every ship that you would ever want and they're all competently outfitted. And then you realise you need to get all of those modules engineered. <laughs> and if you thought the grind was bad up until then, kids, you ain't seen nothing yet. I have 63, 64 including this one, Elite Dangerous videos up on this channel. And the majority of those 64 videos are about the engineering process. Actually, the majority of those videos are about the fastest way to do the engineering process. I hope the irony of that is not lost on you. <laughs> a video series that took months to collect the footage for, playing nearly every day, in order to show you the fastest way <laughs> of getting through the engineering grind. So shall we see what the engineering grind is like in Odyssey? Or at least, I mean, we're not going to see the whole thing. I don't have a year, <laughs> so... <laughs> but we can get an idea of what it's going to be like. So, let's head to our nearest Pioneer Supplies and see exactly what's required in order to upgrade our suits and weapons. Yeah. Suit schematics, health monitors, power regulators, manufacturing instructions, aerogel, graphene. I don't even know what half of these things are, let alone where to find them. But I've got a pretty good idea. Or at least, I think I do. Because, logically, if these are materials that I need to gather to upgrade ground equipment, then I'm going to find them in ground settlements. Because that's what the Odyssey expansion is all about. It wouldn't make sense to have it any other way. And I have been doing a couple of ground settlement missions, and I have already acquired some of these materials, even if I didn't realise what they were for at the time. Uh, unfortunately, because I didn't realise what they were for at the time, I've been selling a lot of these materials. <laughs> yeah, the bartender contact in the station concourses and in the ground settlements is basically your new material trader. The problem is, it only sorts 
between goods and assets, which is some kind of arbitrary distinction that Odyssey makes between different types of materials. But the problem, well, there are actually two problems. The first is that it highlights the assets, but not the goods, which makes you think that the goods aren't actually worthwhile and that they're just to be sold to bartenders, but they're not. You need the goods to upgrade your ground equipment as well. So I kept all of the assets because they're highlighted in blue, they must be important, and I sold all of the goods, but the goods are just as important. And also there are actually more than two categories. There are goods, there are assets, and there are data. But all of the goods and the data are lumped into the same category. And then goods, data and assets are then subdivided in the trade submenu into three entirely different categories. Chemicals, circuits and tech. Which is a very long and convoluted way of saying that they've managed to make it as confusing as they possibly could for you to be able to determine what it is that you actually have that's valuable and what is worthless and can just be sold. All of this could easily have been solved if they just included a way of, for example, pinning a schematic. An ingredient list. So if, for example, I decided I want to upgrade my Artemis suit, the game would highlight suit schematics, nanogel, graphene, manufacturing instructions, things like this, just to let me know that I actually needed those things. But, well, no. That would be far too convenient. So in practice, what you end up doing is either writing this stuff down somewhere, or just picking up everything. Because the overwhelming majority of stuff that you can pick up, at some point you're going to need. So what follows is the benefit of my extremely frustrating at times, trial and error, learning by doing and figuring out the best and most efficient way of obtaining the materials that you need to actually start getting your weapons and suits upgraded. And it is helped, I have to confess, by the fact that there is another engineer whose details are publicly available and who you can unlock by completing 10 settlement restoration missions. And it's these settlement restoration missions which are probably the most efficient way of collecting the materials that you're going to need. So in effect, two birds with one stone. Now, the settlement restoration missions are among the simplest and safest missions that you can perform, but they're by no means entirely without risk. And at least while I was doing it, they were by no means entirely without bugs either. The basic premise for them all is the same. You are tasked with restoring a settlement to normal operations, whether that settlement has just been built and is waiting to be turned on, or whether or not it's been attacked by raiders, and you have to go in, clean up, and restore everything to normal operations. The premise is the same. You will be supplied with a power regulator, which you have to insert into the regulator housing in the power plant. You'll also, for the duration of your visit at the settlement, be granted Grade 3 security privileges, which should, in theory, allow you to get through any locked door, or it would, if the locked doors had any power, and of course they don't, that's why you're here in the first place. So your first priority is always going to be to restore power. And for that, you're going to need to find the power plant. The thing is, not all of these outposts have the same layout. That depends on what type of outpost they are. Are they a mining settlement? Are they a manufacturing settlement? Are they an agricultural settlement? Are they a habitation settlement or a military settlement? But one thing that they do all tend to have in common is that the power plant is usually located right next to the command center, and in some cases is only accessible via the command center. That one caught me out a couple of times. And you can almost always identify the command center because that's going to be the building with the dirty great big communications antenna sticking out of the top of it. So if you can find that, the power plant is usually next door. Most of the time, Finding the power plant, inserting the power regulator, restoring power, and then extinguishing any fires that have broken out in the meantime, will be the only thing that you have to worry about. Most of the time. But not always. Sometimes you're not the only one who wants to steal everything that isn't nailed down at the settlement that you've just been sent to restore. Sometimes, like here, you'll be interrupted by a bunch of scavengers, Sometimes, the scavengers will already be looting the settlement when you arrive. Sometimes none of that will be true, but once you've restored power to the settlement and extinguished any fires, 
you start looting things and the settlement defences suddenly decide that you're a bad person and try to take you out. And it's at this point where you run into a bit of a problem because well, the reason you're here is because your weapons and equipment are all dog shit. <laughs> so <laughs> Now it's not impossible to defend yourself with grade one weapons and equipment. It's just really, really hard. Fortunately, there are a couple of steps that you can take to mitigate the danger and maximize your offensive capability without upgrading any of your weapons and equipment. And I'll show you how. And if, while I'm showing you how, you're thinking, wait, this is bloody stupid, this, this isn't what Odyssey is supposed to be about, hold on to that thought, because you're absolutely correct. So first things first. When you arrive at the location of the settlement that you're supposed to be restoring, although this works equally well for settlements that you're supposed to be attacking, depending on the mission that you've selected, but we're talking about restoration missions here, do not request landing clearance from the settlement. Don't even land at the settlement at all. Instead, park your ship some distance away from the settlement. The reason for this is because if you have landed on a landing pad, you cannot deploy your surface reconnaissance vehicle. But if you land outside the settlement, you can. There's a whole bunch of reasons as to why you're going to want to use the SRV wherever possible, instead of doing these missions the way they're supposed to be done on foot. And the biggest reason is because the SLV has shields, it has armour, it has sensors that can lock onto and identify and track hostile targets at ranges far in excess of the sensors on your suits. And it's also equipped with a turret weapon that can lock onto and track targets and kill them way faster than you can while armed with any of the weapons available to you on foot. And if you think about it, this makes perfect sense. I mean, if you have at your disposal what is basically a tank, because that's effectively what the SRV is, why would you voluntarily choose to go into combat against people on foot and give up the massive advantage that you have by using your vehicles, armour, shields, sensors and weapons? It just doesn't make any sense. So if you're sitting there right now thinking, so you're saying the best way to complete foot missions in Odyssey is to not do missions on foot in Odyssey, then yes, you're absolutely right. And yes, that is exactly as stupid as it sounds, and yes, it does kind of make a mockery of the entire Odyssey expansion, but why would you engage these guys in a fair fight when you have a tank? In fact, it isn't even a fair fight, because there's like 12 of them and one of you. So I'm absolutely going to use a tank if I have a tank available to me. It would just be stupid to do it any other way. There's also the added benefit that, I mean, normally if I was engaging these guys on foot, the way Odyssey expects me to do it, I would have to scan the corpses afterwards in order to determine whether or not any bounties were available on these guys. But thanks to the SRV sensors, I don't even have to do that. Also, because their AI is so unbelievably stupid, they quite happily just run straight towards you. One at a time, all together, doesn't really matter, because I'm in a tank. On top of all this, there are two other extremely good reasons for why you should be doing these missions in the SRV rather than on foot, wherever possible. The first, and probably most important, although not admittedly nearly as important as because you've got a tank, is because the whole purpose of you doing these restoration missions is not just to unlock access to another engineer, it's also to gather all of the materials that you're going to need to upgrade the weapons in the first place, to unlock the modification slots that you get with each weapon and suit upgrade that give the various new Odyssey ground engineers the modification slots that they can work with in the first place. And the Maverick suit, which is what you're going to be using most of the time, because it has the laser cutter, which allows you to make a complete mockery of things like locks, allowing you to get at those materials. While the Maverick suit does have the best carrying capacity of the three suits available, the Maverick suit, the Artemis suit, and the Dominator suit, and no, we're not counting the default flight suit because it cannot be upgraded, the Maverick suit's carrying capacity, while it is the best, is still pretty limited to just 10 data items 
15 goods items and 30 asset items. However, the SRV can also be used as a kind of portable banking vault. Simply drive up to the building that you wish to loot, park the SRV outside, go into the building, cut open everything that you can, cram your pockets full of everything that isn't nailed down. Oops, frame rate tank there for a minute. Thank you, Odyssey. I mean, it's not like I'm playing this on a Ryzen 7 5800X with 8 cores, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and a 3080 graphics card or anything, is it? But yes, cram your pockets full of everything that Maverick Suit will carry, and then simply step outside, dump it all in the SRV, and repeat the process until there's nothing left to loot. So, aside from the fact that the SRV is basically a tank, it's also the quickest and most efficient method of cleaning out a settlement of absolutely everything of value. And the third and final reason why you're going to want to use the SRV, instead of, you know, doing all of this on foot, which is the whole point of Odyssey, and the way you're supposed to do it, is again because of the SRV sensors. The SRV sensors can actually identify, lock onto and pinpoint the locations of materials in a way that you cannot do at all on foot in your suit. So when you think you've cleared a building out completely, just pop into the SRV and take a look around. And the SRV will tell you whether you have or you haven't. Oh, I missed some tungsten carbide, some epoxy adhesives and some aerogel. Turns out I wasn't actually quite as thorough in looting that building as I thought, and that stuff in particular, not so much the energy cell, but the tungsten carbide and the aerogel, is definitely worth going back for. So, yeah, it turns out that the best and most efficient way of doing Elite Odyssey missions is to not do them the Elite Odyssey way, and instead do them the Elite Horizons way. And, quite frankly, that's just fucking ridiculous. But it is the best way to do it. Thankfully, there are at least some things that the SRV can't help you with, and which must be handled on foot, which is good, because otherwise there'd be no point to this expansion whatsoever. After inserting the power regulator into this facility's power plant, I'm waiting for everything to fully power up, and that panel on the wall that I'm looking at is going to be an environmental regulation panel. Because as well as powering up the settlement, sometimes you also have to extinguish any fires that have broken out, and you can do that by using these environmental regulator panels and depressurizing the facility of its atmosphere, which will extinguish all the fires. Once you've powered up the settlement, you do need to be careful, and I did learn this the hard way as well, because if you've done anything illegal prior to powering the settlement up, the base defences come online because you've powered the settlement up. And you've basically now flagged yourself as an enemy because you were, well, you know, stealing stuff. The simplest way to prevent this from happening is when you arrive, go straight to the power plant, insert the power regulator into the regulator housing, power up all the systems, then head straight to the command centre, turn off the anti-personnel turrets, turn off the alarms, turn off the authorization scanners, and then at that point you can basically help yourself to anything that isn't nailed down without any fear of repercussions. Even if I had done everything right, however, Odyssey still managed to find a few ways to make things just that little bit more difficult than they needed to be. The first mission critical bug that I encountered, which, to be completely fair, I believe uh, Frontier Developments have now patched, occurred when I was attempting to find the environmental regulation panels inside the buildings that were actually on fire in these settlements. You know, the fires that I had to extinguish in order to actually complete the mission that I've been sent here to do. What was happening was that the control panels that you used to vent the atmosphere were there, they were just invisible. You could only see them when you were viewing them at certain angles and at certain distances. Otherwise, they just, to all intents and purposes, didn't exist. Now, I'm sure you can imagine, that makes it pretty difficult to extinguish fires. The extinguishing of which is the whole reason why you're there in the first place. Just to make sure we're all on the same page here, what I'm saying is that Odyssey would send me to settlements to put out fires and then hide the things that I needed to put the fires out with. Yeah, it really was that stupid. Fortunately, there were a couple of ways around this, 
Um, the first was that I accidentally walked into some of these panels and that's how I realised they were being hidden from me. And the second is you can achieve exactly the same thing by using these emergency access panels, usually located on the top of, but sometimes located around the back of various different buildings. It does require the use of the arc cutter, so you must be wearing the Maverick suit, but you can do exactly the same thing from here. And these were a lot harder for Odyssey to hide from me. The second and easily most annoying bug I encountered was after completing one of these restoration missions and extinguishing all the fires and restoring the power and helping myself to anything that hadn't been nailed down along the way. You can see the mission is complete. My only objective now is to leave the settlement. So I left the settlement headed back to the station where I took on the mission in the first place. And I know I'm heading in the right direction because there it is. Highlighted in blue, next mission objective, return to MacArthur Gateway. Arrive at MacArthur Gateway, dock, disembark, take the lift to the concourse, head to the nearest terminal. And there it is, complete missions, highlighted in blue. What was that? Let's try it again. I know the mission's complete because my transaction log is saying the mission is complete. And, well, you know, I was there when it happened, so I know I did it. I tried another terminal. Complete mission. The panel wouldn't be blue if there weren't completed missions. It would be greyed out. So I tried turning it off and turning it back on again. Yep, tried the old log out and then log back in again thing. And, uh, nope. Still wasn't having any of it. So I gave up in disgust for the day. Logged back in the next day, hoping that the problem would have fixed itself, and it kind of had. Checked my transaction log, where the previous day there'd been a completed mission that I simply hadn't been able to hand in for some reason, and where today there was in fact a mission that had been failed, which not only cost me the rewards from the mission, not only cost me reputation with the faction who gave me the mission, but also gave me a 100,000 credit fine. To be fair, this only happened once, but that's still one time too many because each of these missions can easily take up an hour to two hours of your life. And remember, you have to do ten of these things minimum in order to unlock access to that second engineer. There is another way of speeding this process up, however. When you're picking the missions that you want to take, filter them by the missions that offer material rewards, engineering materials, the kind of things that you're doing this for in the first place. And always, if given the choice, take the material rather than the financial or the influence reward for successful completion of a mission. By the time you've done the 10 restoration missions that are required to unlock access to the second engineer, you should easily have gathered enough materials, or at least I certainly did, to upgrade every weapon and suit that you own to grade 2, which unlocks the engineer modification slots on each of those suits and each of those weapons. If you're still missing out on a couple of the, the more rare and hard to find material components, then you can trade them in with ones that you have lots of at the bartender, who as well as handling stolen goods, will also cheerfully rip you off and charge you an obscene conversion rate in order to turn extremely valuable things that you have a lot of into equally valuable but now grossly overpriced things that you do not have a lot of. And now, at last, I have enough materials to upgrade my weapons and my suits. No, we haven't even touched the engineers yet. This is the process that you have to go through in order to upgrade your existing equipment to unlock the engineering slots, without which, if you were to turn up at an engineer with grade 1 equipment, which is what I did right at the beginning of the video, you can go back and check. If you were to do that, you wouldn't even be able to see the exact details of the modifications that the engineers were going to put into those slots, and you certainly wouldn't see what it was going to cost. Nevertheless, after over a week of solid grinding, you now find me in the position where I have all of my suits upgraded to Grade 2, except for the flight suit, because that can't be upgraded, and the weapons that I use the most upgraded to Grade 2 unlocking those all-important first engineer modification slots. So, let's head back to Domino Green and see what we can do.
Domino, you wild and crazy creature, I have returned after more than a week's concentrated grinding, but this time I bring upgraded weapons and equipment in order for you to upgrade my weapons. And... Yeah, it does sound pretty stupid when I actually say it out loud like that. But anyway, show me what you got. Just can't stay away. I don't blame you. I am pretty great. Wow, that sounded arrogant, didn't it? So what will it be? Soup mods? Weapon mods? Brain mods? Actually, I, I can't do brain mods. Last time I got yelled at by some guy with a mustache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show me what you can do. Let's start with the suits. The suit stuff or gun stuff? Maverick suit, I want to expand... Wait. You want how much? I don't even know what some of those things are. Don't forget, it took me a week, more than a week, of concentrated grinding just to get to this stage. And and this is just to fill one modification slot. If I want to go any further than this, I have to upgrade all of my gear to grade 3. So, it's not like... I mean, initially I thought that the grinding in Odyssey was twice as bad as it was in Horizons with the original engineers. But no, it's actually a lot worse than that. I mean, I thought it was that way because first I have to upgrade all of my equipment. And then I have to farm the materials required for the engineers to actually apply modifications to the modification slots. But I'm not done once I've upgraded my equipment. There are five different levels of equipment upgrade and the costs rise exponentially. Mm -hmm. Just as an example, using the Maverick suit, and remember this is just one of my three suits, not including any of the weapons, but to go from grade one to grade two on the Maverick suit required like one of this, one of that, three of those, and five of those. But look at what's required. Oh, and half a million credits. But look at what's required to go from grade two to grade three. It looks like it doubles the material requirements every time you go up a grade. And there are five grades. And then, of course, there's, on top of that, all of the other materials that you have to grind out in order to actually apply the engineer upgrades that you want into those unlocked engineer modification slots. So, it's not twice as grindy as the Elite Horizons engineer experience. This is probably five or six times as grindy as the Elite Horizons engineering experience, which has been criticised for years as being one of the grindiest experiences in the history of all grindy experiences. So even when Odyssey works, and it doesn't always work, and that's another rabbit hole we could go down, but even when Odyssey works, even when I'm bypassing the Odyssey requirements by doing things in an SLV, because hell, why wouldn't you use a tank if you have one available, even if that's not what you're supposed to do, it's still five or six times more grindy than the previous expansion. And you don't need to do any of it in order to do what, at its heart, Elite has always been about. Flying around in starships, exploring the galaxy and shooting things. All of which, I suppose, is a fairly long-winded and convoluted way of simply saying, Ain't nobody got time for this shit!